Hello everyone. Today I will talk about collinearity in Maxim modeling. I'm Xiao Feng. So I don't know about you, but I have received comments from reviewers with different opinions. Some reviewer wants me to use less predictors and then pick the ones that are less correlated. Well, the other group of reviewer have asked me, have told me that removing correlated variables is not necessary for Maxim. Well, all of those different opinions got me trying to ask the question, does clarity matter in Maxim modeling? And this is what I will talk about today. So here's the outline of this talk. So I will first uh, explain what is clarity and why people want to avoid it. And then I will talk about clarity in Maxim modeling and also in the context of model transfer. Then I will talk about a simulation experiment and then I'm going to give you some final remarks. So first, what is clarity? It refers to the dependency status or linear correlation among predictors. In other words, it's multiple predictors that are correlated. Why people want to avoid it? Because clarity can affect the estimation of the coefficients. And because of the, the Uncertainties in the estimation of the coefficients that would affect the interpretation of the model. Well, I'm going to explain this with a very, very simple example. Here is the equation of a linear uh, model. We have the intercept beta 1 and beta 2. Let's assume that the true values of beta 1 and beta 2 are 1 and 2. Then we can simulate the predictors. One group of the predictors are highly correlated, as shown in this figure, and the other group of predictors could be uncorrelated. And then if we do, if we use those simulated predictors to train the model, here's what we get for the estimation of beta one. This um, green area shows the histogram of the estimated beta one from the uncorrelated predictors. Well, on the other side, if you look, look at the red area, that is the estimation from the correlated predictors. You can see that the green um, histogram is very close to one, which is centered on one, whereas the, the red histogram has very wide spread. That's the so-called uncertainty in the parameter estimation. This is for beta 1. It's actually the same for beta 2. You can see that this histogram is all centered on uh, 2, which is the true value. But the, the estimation from the uncorrelated predictors is more concentrated around the true value, where the ones based on correlated predictors had more uncertainties. So the clarity in the variables can affect the estimation of the coefficients. But however, the prediction is fine when the predict conditions are similar as the training data. You can see that the, here shows the, the mean square arrow from either uncorrelated or correlated predictors. They're almost the same. Remember that there's a big if here the condition is that the predict conditions are similar as the training data. Only in those conditions, the prediction is fine. And because of the, the, the clarity, how that will affect the estimation of parameter in regressions, a lot of scholars have been following the rule of thumb in practice. Basically, they, sim they select variables with less correlations, and they usually use the coefficient of 0 0.7 as the threshold. Now I want to transition on to clarity and Maxine. Maybe you already know that Maxine is one of the most commonly used algorithm in modeling spatial distribution of ecological niche. And the major Maxine uh, publication has been cited a lot of time. Here just a curve shows cumulative citation over years. 
So we did a very simple survey of the group uh, of the papers published in 2017. So we look at uh, approximately 980 vaccine related publications. We found that uh, approximately 20% of the papers, they talk about the kind of reality or variable selection. And majority of the papers here, which is approximately 80%, they never talk about collaborality or variable selection. Well, this suggests that the role of collaborality in maximum modeling it is still unclear in the published literature. Also, if you read the literature of on, on maximum and collaborality, you can see that there are different views in the theoretical recommendations. For example, paper um, here's the, a quote from a paper, basically it's saying the collaborality is less an issue for Maxim. And here's another example on the other side. They recommend users to minimize collaborality in Maxim. Well, also in practice, there are different uh, approaches. Here's the one example. Basically used all 19 bioclimatic variables, which we know that are Many of them are highly correlated. On the other side, you can also find papers that use a particular threshold here, 0.7, um, to select less correlated variables. And those are just two examples that are published. What I'm trying to show is that there are different views in the community and also in the published literature. Well, to make this seem even more complicated, I want to talk about Collaborality in the context of model transfer. So first, model transfer is very common. Uh, a lot of times people train a model in one location and then project the model to another location. And also uh, people can train a model under present conditions and make prediction in future climatic conditions. So model transfer is very, very common. But when you do the model transfer, the predictors here we refer to environmental conditions can be different between the training and the projected regions. Well, when they're different, the one thing we want to pay attention to is the connectivity structure that could change during model transfer. Here's one example of the correlation matrix from uh, present climate or for future climate. I want you to pay attention to just the few things to see where they change. So here, the correlation coefficient between bio4 and bio5 decreased from 0.5 to 0.3. Here, the correlation coefficient between bio5 and bio16 had a sign change. It goes from negative to positive. And also, this correlation coefficient between bio6 and bio17 um, increased. So this is just one example of how the connectivity structure can change when you uh, transfer the model uh, temporarily. Or here's another example how this can change over space. So here, this map, each color shows one biome, and those little boxes shows the correlation um, coefficients. If you only look at the one box, it is a it shows the matrix and the color represent how two variables are correlated. And each box corresponding to the correlation structure in one biome. Well, the thing we want to pay attention to is how the color can change over different biomes. So given that the colorality structure could change when we do the model transfer, we have to rethink the collaborative from two perspectives. So first, it, I, I call, people call this the degree of collaborality. It simply refers to the collaborality that we have talked about. It's the linear correlation among predictors so in the training data. The other important aspect is collaborative shift, which refers to the difference of the correlation structure between the training and the testing data, or the testing data here can be replaced as 
on the projected regions. So here's how they differ cosmetically. When we talk about the degree of collaborality, we are referring to the correlation, the strength of the correlation in one set of predictors. When we talk about the collaborality shift, we're talking about the difference between two data sets. One is used for data training, one is where we want to project the model to. Next, I want to talk about this um, an assimilation experiment that I want to try to figure out which of the two aspects would matter more. So I have a two hypotheses. One is that the degree of connerality can affect the performance of maximum models. And the second hypothesis is that the clarity shift can affect the performance of maximum models. And here's more detail about the simulations. So we simulated a gradient of connerality by either randomly selected variables or try to avoid highly correlated variables to the common approach in practice. We also uh, simulated a gradient of clarity shift by simulating scenarios of spatial transfer or when there's no spatial transfer. We use the uh, AUC and the TSS to evaluate the models. So uh, I want to avoid all the methodology details and show you the result. If you want to see more details, you can look at our paper. Um, here are the, the DOI for that paper. So here's the summary of the results. Um, in this panel, we use the solid line to represent uh, significant effects. If we put a star here, we, uh, um, a plus sign here, we are referring to the significant positive effects. If there's a, a blue minus sign here, it refers to the significant negative effects. If there is no um, significant effects, we use the, the dashed line. So model transfer leads to uh, worse model performance. And avoid highly correlated variables lead to no difference in the performance of max and models. Okay, why? If we look at into the, the middle, so when we do model transfer, it leads to connerality shifts. And the connerality shifts have a, a significant negative effects in model performance. On the other side, if we try to avoid highly correlated variables, we get a smaller degree of clarity, but that does not affect model performance. Okay, here the, that's a, a simple summary of the results. Um, further, because our model simulations involves uh, spatial transfer, that may means model extrapolation could have played a role there as, um, and may likely affect our conclusions. So what is model extrapolation? Here I use figure to show that how model extrapolation is bad. On X axis, we're, we're talking about one abiotic condition, for example, temperature. The Y axis is the model prediction, say probability of presence. When we have um, limited knowledge to train the model, we can only draw a small portion of the curve. And when we try to make predictions outside our training data, we do have a lot of ways to, to, to make predictions. Um, however, though there would be no support by data, that would mean this model extrapolation shown at this purple lines at least a lot of uncertainties. So model extrapolation is bad. In our uh, results, we further look at um, if model uh, extrapolation had been playing a role in our results. So basically we look at how model performance is explained by numerical novelty, which has shown um, how far away the model is extrapolating, and also relative shifts. We found that both um, model extrapolation and clean relative shifts can lead to worse performance. So they're both bad. 
Um, even though there are model extrapolation involved, the current Rayleigh shift itself, it is still posing a negative effects in model performance. Um, an obvious and natural question is that are those two factors are commonly correlated? So um, we found that the presence of the two factors are correlated, okay, which, which means every time when there's a model transfer in loss or where, where, when you transfer a model to another a location, we would, we would find model extrapolation and also model, um, and also the color relative shifts. However, the values, say the magnitude of the two factors are likely um, decoupled. Which means if you go further away from your training data in the environmental space, you may not necessarily see a large clean relative shifts. Okay, here's some more thoughts about how when will the clean relative shifts uh, show up. So we think that the clean relative shifts is not predictable because it is a uh, determinant when a projected area is selected. And the colorative shift is independent from the degree of clarity. So, so can we say that the highly correlated variables are more likely to have colorative shifts? Um, I guess no. Can we say that the less correlated variables would less likely have colorative shifts? Well, I guess no also. So kind of relative shift is kind of independent from the training data, but it is more uh, determined by the, the, the data from the projected regions. Okay, here are some final remarks um, to, the, to, the, to the major question we proposed in the beginning. That's kind of relative matter in maximum modeling. Okay, so first of all, we should distinguish the degree of clarity versus the clarity shift. So our simulations found that Maxen is robust to the degree of clarity in model training because the strat and also the strategy of excluding highly correlated variables has little impact because Maxen can account for the reduction in, in variables. But however, um, the kind of relative shifts and also maybe the, the environmental novelties can both lead to negative effects of the model um, performance, the theory model transfer. Further, the kind of relative shift is independent from model training and is determined by the choice of when and where the model will be projected. So therefore, um, I would recommend people to uh, quantify and report polar relative shift as a way to infer the underlying model, model, the uncertainties of model predictions. This is similar as we commonly report and quantify the environmental novelty, which is the difference between <clears throat> training and testing data. Um, I think I'm just um, providing a superficial um, an overview about this uh, issue in the kind of relative maxim. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or, or ask me anyway. Thank you very much.